Hello, and welcome to the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluations Postgraduate Fellowship Program online information session. I'm Dane Vogue, Program Manager of the Postgraduate Fellowship Program, and I'm accompanied today from, with Marie Ng. From, she's an Assistant Professor of Global Health, and Laura DiGiorgio, who's a current Postgraduate Fellow. Today we're going to be discussing um, a number of different opportunities here at IHME and uh, give you an opportunity to hear more about our core content areas and the research that IHME was founded upon. We'd like to give you an opportunity to hear a little bit about what uh, the current postgraduate fellowship program is like and give you a perspective on the new application process as we move forward uh, with rolling admissions and tell you a little bit about our alumni and where they go now, or where they are now. And we also will have opportunities to uh, take questions and answers from uh, viewers currently. There's a text box, and if you could just um, type in your question overall, and uh, we'll be able to answer that appropriately at the end of our presentation today. So IHME was started in 2007 uh, as a research institution with In Global Health at the University of Washington. And we've looked at um, organizing our research around three critical questions um, to look at the current state of population health and the strategies on how to improve health outcomes. Looking at what are the world's major health problems, how well is society addressing these problems, and how do we best maximize health improvements. Um, potential applicants can look on our website here at uh, the current projects that are located on our project page. And this gives you a perspective of the different um, projects that are currently happening at IHME. Overall, we, as a postgraduate fellow, you can focus on four content areas that span a number of our major projects which include impact evaluations, global burden of disease, methods and development, as well as health economics. And Marie is going to start us off here, uh, first talking about GBD. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> so GBD is uh, global burden of disease. It's the flagship project of the institute. Um, the goal of the study is to systematically quantify um, the health issues and risk factors around the world starting from 1990 to this day. Um, the project is very interesting in several sense. Um, first of all, it's a truly international collaborative effort. Um, we currently have over 1,000 investigators um, in more than 100 countries. And the second interesting aspect of GBD is that it's very interdisciplinary and it's also very intellectually challenging. Um, it's not just about epidemiology or medicine, it's also about like computer science, uh, statistics, mathematics, economics. So it's a very, very fun project to work on. Um, I've been in one component of it, um, where in the past years, I get to look at data around the world um, and try to estimate like obesity prevalence and smoking pattern um, in different countries. So it's a really, really eye-opening project. Um, the second area I can talk about is impact evaluation. So in impact evaluation, in this particular area of research, we focus on looking at the health outcome of different health programs. The type of programs we look at really varies. Um, so in my experience, I've looked at HIV prevention program, malaria control policy, um, and currently I'm starting a project uh, looking at uh, non-communicable disease uh, prevention and treatment. Um, impact evaluation, again, is very, very interesting as well because um, the results has a very immediate practical implication. Um, on the other hand, causal attribution itself uh, is um, an area that is a very challenging statistically. So it's both uh, practical and also like methodologically challenging. Um, the last area that I want to mention is our method development um, area of research. Um, as you can hear from my previous description of GBD as well as impact evaluation, um, the work at IHM is very quantitative and data driven. <coughs> and in global health, the nature of data is fairly unique. Um, we face um, the issue of like data sparsity, um, missingness in data, data inconsistency. Um, these data challenges kind of 
open the door for a lot of room for developing new methods. So in the methodology development and algorithm development, um, we have computer scientists looking at what is the best way to do data mining and also a uh, statistician like myself looking at what is the best way to do causal attribution. So it's a very diverse area of research. Thank you. Um, Lara, do you mind talking a little bit about our health economics? Sure. Uh, so health economics is a very broad discipline, therefore we would like to provide you with some additional um, information regarding the type of research that is carried out here at IGME. Uh, in the area of health economics, IGME examines so, um, how social and economic factors affect and are affected by health outcomes. And uh, research includes micro and macro analysis ranging from single countries to multiple country and global studies. And the major focus of uh, IGME research are low resource settings, but uh, an important part of the research uh, is also devoted to domestic uh, issues. Uh, work at IGME, as Mary said, uh, is guided really by the principle of applying rigorous methodologies to investigate policy relevant uh, questions. More precisely, in uh, the field of health economics, we work on five major areas. The first is the uh, measurement of relative efficiency of different healthcare providers, ranging from health centers to national and district hospitals. The second is uh, the assessment on unit cost of providing care, which remains um, a challenge due to the absence of um, health information system in many countries. The third one is uh, measuring uh, universal <coughs> health coverage or also effective coverage. The fourth is uh, tracking resources for health, uh, including development assistance, and looking at how changes in development assistance affect both health outcomes and um, domestic spending for health. And finally, uh, the last group of research a look at assessing the relationship between um, expenditure in health and burden of diseases both within countries and uh, across countries. Thank you, Laura and Marie. Um, the overall uh, difference between IHME and a traditional postdoc um, is really important distinction at this program. A traditional postdoc normally is self-selected research, and it's an unstructured environment where there's minimal mentorship. And uh, at IHME, you're focusing on one of these core content areas um, and the projects that were highlighted on the website, as well as having a structured work environment where you're really able to uh, have an emphasis on team building, you're working with a larger community on helping um, solve some of these quantitative uh, quandaries. And uh, Additionally, the, one of the most important pieces of uh, the PGF program is our program components. Now, Laura, can you tell us a little bit about your experience as a postgraduate fellow and some of uh, your research as well? Sure. Um, the experience that I do me as a postgraduate fellow, I think it depends on different factors, such as uh, the personal background and maybe the motivation. Um, when I finished my PhD in the Department of Economics, I was strongly motivated to uh, apply my knowledge in, uh, to investigate policy relevant issues. And I think this is my daily experience as postgraduate fellow at IGME. However, in terms of um, project assignments, when I started IGME, I was assigned to ABC project, Access Bottlenecks, Cost and Equity, which is a project looking at the determinants for suboptimal healthcare delivery in different countries. And this was kind of a natural choice due to the great fit between my expertise, the expertise from my PhD and the project needs. Uh, however, after about six months, um, in light of my interest in um, working for uh, impact evaluation studies, I joined uh, the project at RISE together with Marie and other uh, colleagues. Um, so the working dynamic at IGME can differ depending on the project, uh, the supervisor, and expertise of the fellow in that particular project. However, in uh, health economics, um, fellows mainly work in relatively small groups that are composed by one or two faculty, uh, post-bachelor fellows, and data analysts. And uh, in my experience with ABC has been uh, 
very flexible. We have been working together as a team on a daily basis, meeting more times per day, and uh, work tasks have been shifted depending on the skills and the timing. Um, it has been a very, very collaborative uh, work. Uh, work at IGME in general is project oriented, meaning that uh, everybody works together to really um, carry out the project and meet the deadlines. And uh, I really believe this work environment um, gives us the opportunity to learn skills that go beyond the traditional research skills and include uh, project management, managing a team, um, interacting with donors, and uh, as well as translating scientific methodologies and findings for policymakers and, and donors. Uh, so at IGME, as a postgraduate fellow, we benefit from a full range of um, resources, as Dana mentioned before. And I would like to stress how these uh, opportunities really foster personal and professional development. And just to give you an example, postgraduate fellow are allowed to attend two conferences for develop, uh, personal development as well as other conferences to present IGME work. Um, so, for example, I participate to the International Economic Association in July in Dublin, to the COG8 conference in Washington DC, and I'm going to go to the Health System Research Conference in Cape Town at the end of September. So these are opportunities for networking, for inspiration for our research, and for building um, capacity. Thank you very much, Laura. Uh, overall, I want to talk a little bit about the application process now that we've moved to rolling admissions. Um, the First, the qualifications overall within the application process. As you know, um, we are an interdisciplinary research institution, so we are looking for people in economics, statistics, epidemiology, computer science, and medical degrees. Overall, the primary qualifications is a PhD or MD within the past six years. And uh, we, on average, look for about three to six fellows per year on an annual basis. And uh, now that we've moved to a rolling admissions, we're better able to serve potential applicants by um, making the whole process of identifying an area of interest and the application process roughly eight to 10 weeks. And people that start as fellows will be starting on a rolling basis as well. Previously, it was just in September. Um, so we thought that would be better to accommodate everyone's uh, needs in applying. Overall, the step one of the application process here, you can join me online, um, is the looking at identifying your area of interest. As uh, we've already discussed, there are four major content areas that we would like to have fellow or potential applicants look at. There's impact evaluations, global burden of disease, health economics, and methods development. And on the website, you can see that there is an individual article under each section, one to two options. We ask that uh, candidates um, take one, read one of these articles um, that is a sample that represents a lot of the analytical and quantitative methods used across IHME. Within this information, we would like you to identify your thoughts on uh, this form here. You just download this. And this would identify your thoughts on the important outcomes that you thought of the study the study design, the data, methods, and results, as well as any unanswered questions you may have about this specific topic. So once you have identified these major areas, we ask that you email your responses to pgf at healthdata.org. And we'll be able to receive, uh, you'll receive notice um, within about three weeks if you've been selected to move on to the application process. The application process itself is online. It's um, a qualifications of these six application items. And you will, applicants will be invited for about roughly four weeks to submit um, all of these items. 
Uh, we know that sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get letters of recommendation within that time span. Um, so we can be a little bit flexible with uh, appropriate communication. And then after applicants uh, have submitted this information, uh, they'll be contacted to schedule the next steps, which could include a Skype interview. After, and then after that interview, the candidacy can unfold a couple of different ways. Um, we'll be conducting job talks, which is a 45-minute presentation of your most significant research. Um, and also, I think it's important to highlight um, the interest and how it relates to IHME. And this would be done through a Skype job talk uh, with a number of our faculty. And then um, after that process, we would consider having an in-person interview with our faculty, meeting our fellows, seeing IHME in Seattle, and um, seeing if this is a right fit for our, um, you. And the whole application process, as I said earlier, should be roughly eight to 10 weeks. Um, do you have any thoughts about uh, positioning yourself appropriately for the job talk? And uh, maybe give an example briefly of what you did? Yeah, I think uh, what I did is um, to highlight how I could contribute to IGME research given my, uh, my skills that I acknowledged from my PhD, but also highlighting uh, my interest in expanding research and showing that was still a fit within IGME work. Well, thank you. So I think uh, one of the most important parts of this program is also looking at opportunities afterwards. Uh, with a number of its program components and professional development, IHME really strives to um, help uh, identify the key areas where our postgraduate fellows want to go on afterward. Uh, we currently have 31 alumni all around the world, and um, they're advancing their careers in many different ways through academia, international organizations, NGOs, and other research institutions. Um, some have even stayed as faculty after uh, their time here at IHME. Um, one of our important parts of uh, the process as well is helping build capacity um, not just within the US um, and within our interdisciplinary uh, research but uh, helping build capacity within others home countries uh, and you can check out um, online uh, where specifically our alumni have gone Let me just pull this up sorry It's uh, currently not working, so I apologize. Um, but our alumni page from uh, the Postgraduate Fellowship Program, you can see uh, the number of different institutions where our, our fellows are currently placed. Um, at this time, I'd like to show a video of Thomas Odeni. He's a previous uh, alum, and he's going to talk a little bit about his experience in the program. My name is Thomas Odeng. I am a physician from Kenya. I work here at the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation as a postgraduate fellow in the Access Bottlenecks, Costs and Equity, or ABCE team. So the postgraduate fellowship cohort that I've been part of has been a great team to work with. I've enjoyed being part of what's been an exciting, multicultural, multilingual and intelligent uh, cohort and taking part in many of the program components. In particular, I've really enjoyed the weekly journal clubs. I think these have been an excellent opportunity for me to not only learn uh, advanced statistical methods but also hear you know different points of view and learn from um, PGFs who come from very diverse uh, professional backgrounds. It's also been a chance for us to bond professionally and I believe that the, the friendships that we formed, uh, you know, analyzing papers every week uh, will last us for many years to come. During my fellowship, I've been fortunate to be able to present my IHME related research at four conferences. For example, I attended the 
conference on retroviruses and opportunistic infections in Atlanta at the beginning of this year, which is one of the largest uh, HIV-specific conferences. So when I return to Kenya, I plan to uh, play a role in reducing the healthcare inequalities uh, in my home country. One of the things I plan to do is to conduct implementation science research at the Kenya Medical Research Institute. I also hope to teach at the Cambridge Graduate School of Health Sciences. And I would like to begin to mentor other young scientists and share my uh, experience and knowledge in the field of global health. Thank you so much, uh, Brent. I have here the uh, alumni page up here so you can look at these individual institutions. And um, now I'd like to take a little bit of time to answer some of the questions that have been coming up within um, the information session. Uh, the first is, can you speak to more than can you be interested in, in one, more, one or more content areas? The answer to that, I think, is yes. You absolutely can be interested in more than one. But in the application process on this page here, uh, you'll be able to see, one second, the application process page here, the identifying your area of interest, we really would like you to choose the one you're most interested in. And based on mutual fit um, and your skills and experience, we'll be able to um, accommodate uh, flexibility, much like Lara did with um, being health economics and now um, being involved with impact evaluations. Um, the second one is how can the articles be accessed? They, on this page, the application page, they're in a light green directly below the area of the area of interest. And if you just click on that, it'll automatically download the article for you to access, as well as the form for the application um, in questions is downloading this form here. It's also uh, in green. Um, and uh, there's a couple of questions that we could take now. Um, do you have projects in the area of maternal health? The question is, do we have projects in the area of maternal health? Um, let me think. We have a closed project. There at this point. are. I mean, um, the in terms of impact evaluation, um, I, um, there we just have many, many different projects that I cannot recite. <laughs> um, so we have Gavi that's ongoing. Um, we also have IVB. Um, so I guess my suggestion, since I cannot recite every project, I'll suggest our candidates to look on our website. And if they have specific question, um, maybe email us, and then we can provide them more information. Because our project is constantly evolving, and it just there are always um, new things happening, and also. A big part of GBB, of course, is uh, involved like estimating um, maternal health um, issues related to maternal health as well. So we always have things to relevant into maternal health. And you can email us at pgf at healthdata.org to find out a little bit more, as well as accessing our project page at healthdata.org slash projects. Is there some research we are currently doing in qualitative uh, analysis or assessment? Yes, so um, in fact, quite a few of our existing impact evaluation project have qualitative component because we are very well aware um, the limitation of quantitative that only gives us certain aspect of the reality. And so we do have qualitative um, aspect incorporated into our research. For example, the Gavi project, the Health Rights project. Um, we currently don't have anyone in-house, actually, um, but I guess there may be opportunities um, 
in this area as well. However, I still have to emphasize that this is a very quantitative um, uh, institution. So uh, something for the candidate to think about in terms of um, when they want to pursue a postdoc here. Um, while they are contributing, um, I guess, haven't been a postdoc, uh, also think about what you can gain out of this experience. Absolutely. Do you have anything to comment? No, I think I agree with <laughs> Thanks. I think we have time for one more question. Oh, OK. Uh, we are almost out of time. So I'd like to thank Laura and Marie for joining us today. And if you do have any other uh, additional questions regarding our application process, or the project scope within IHME's current projects, you can email us at pgf at healthdata.org. And thank you. Thank you. Bye.